from my cold, dead hands. In an article last year from the Christian Science Monitor entitled, A Rifle in One Hand, A Laptop in the Other, Josh Sugarman of the anti-gun group Violence Policy Center is actually quoted as saying, if you compare the pro-gun activity in the blogosphere versus the pro-gun control activity, the scales have just tipped tremendously in their favor. There's much more engagement, much more involvement, and they clearly have more free time than people on our side of the issue do. Well, there is much more engagement and much more involvement, but what he leaves out is that while in fact I am doing this in my free time, as most gun bloggers are, we're kicking his ass, and he's paid to do his job. Now, why is this the case? Because we're actually talking about facts and truth, whereas anti-gun people only have hysterics and emotional claims that really have no basis in fact. So, to, to uh, follow that up, I'm going to show you the myth of the assault rifle. Now, the AR-15 is a very modular uh, rifle. Anything you do, I believe, if you're going to build one, it should be purpose-built. It can do anything from being a highly accurate long-range varmint rifle to throwing larger calibers. It can be used for deer if you've got it in the right caliber. Or you can put it in the hippie scaring configuration. I run Duke 2 mags with my ready mag right there. I've got a free float system made by Voltor, an extending stock, and I'm going to go over basically the whole purpose behind this was to put every evil feature from the 1994 assault weapons ban on here. Now, the vertical foregrip wasn't an evil feature. I just put it on there in the odds that it might make an anti-gun person angry. Uh, this rifle is designed explicitly to make Violency Policy Center, Josh Sugarman, the Brady Campaign, all crap themselves in terror that a free American can actually own such a thing. Now, while I'm showing you this, keep in mind this is a semi-automatic rifle. Functionally, this is no different than a hunting rifle from the 1960s, 50s, or possibly even before. What makes it an assault rifle? First, they're lying to you when they call it an assault rifle. They're basing that on cosmetics. And if you're going to call a black gun evil, it's no different than calling black people evil. It's racist when you say it about people. It's just plain stupid when you say it about guns. Either way, it's dumb to base something off of cosmetics. Function is what matters. So let's get into the function. Now, I'm going to take this second mag off. The ability to accept a magazine of greater than 10 rounds, or a detachable magazine. That was one of the evil features. Because, you know, something like logic and the fact that it's a more uh, usable mechanism, we can't have that. Logic has no place in the world of the anti-gun people. One of the other comments, or uh, rather evil features, was the pistol grip. Because apparently, being able to, let's see if I can get in the camera here, putting your hand like this, as opposed to this, does what exactly? Makes the gun more deadly? How? It has nothing to do with the feature of the gun. Unless, like my buddy Tom, who's an older gentleman now, been in several motorcycle accidents, you can't bend your arm certain ways. In a way, you could say that banning this is actually uh, prejudicial or, um, let's see, segregational against the disabled. You know, you could make that argument. It's stupid. And if that's more ergonomic or allows somebody to shoot to defend themselves, maybe they should be allowed to. Uh, another evil feature was this bayonet lug right here. Because drive-by stabbings from bayonets are just out of control in Compton. Again, retarded. Now, quite frankly, I have no use for a bayonet lug. I don't know any of my buddies who've been kicking indoors who say they've ever affixed bayonets. I personally don't even want it. The only reason it's on here, to make hippies cry. A flash hider, a threaded muzzle, flash suppressor, and possibly muzzle brakes all were illegal because apparently the anti-gun people think that that's an assassin's tool. Uh, they think it's designed for putting silencers on or makes you invisible, um, it, nothing of the sort. And again, it goes back to their claim of hysterics. They don't know what they're talking about. Remember, anti-gun people think a muzzle shroud uh, or a barrel shroud is a shoulder thing that goes up. They're idiots. What this does do 
is uh, if you are engaged in combat, yes, it will reduce your muzzle signature and has that ability. Why do I have it on what would most realistically be a home defense gun? Because I think it would be really swell if in an interior environment I didn't have a huge flash, I was able to maintain some semblance of night vision and continue to put rounds into a bad guy in a safe manner rather than be blinded fire wildly and have rounds with a lawyer attached to them go God knows where. It's a practical device, but again, hysterics, gun control measures, they go hand in hand. Okay, uh, there was one other evil feature I wanted to get to before the stock, but I'm drawing a blank right now, I apologize. So, let's uh, go ahead and talk about the stock. A collapsing stock, or something with multi-positions, was another thing that was deemed an evil feature. Apparently, with something like this, being able to reduce, this is the length of pull, length from the shoulder to here. Uh, apparently, four inches length of pull, anti-gun people think that it makes this thing super concealable. You can just throw it under a jacket, and oh my god! And there'll be blood in the streets, which of course there never has been, even though pro-gun measures keeps getting passed. Uh, you know what this does do? Is it allows a shooter smaller than myself to use the thing. You see, if it's too long, I'm six foot, okay? It doesn't really bother me. I've got long old monkey arms. It's no big deal. A full size stock never phases me. But uh, women tend to be a little bit smaller than me, most of the girls I date anyway. And uh, this is, you could say, banning something like this is sexist. Saying that women can't shoot this because now they're no longer permitted to adjust it to fit themselves. Again, it's a crock. And guys, while we're on the topic of women, let me just throw this out here. I know you want to get her a snub nose revolver because you think it's simple and won't confuse her and blah, blah, blah. Trust me, my mom's sewing machine is more complicated than this rifle, okay? Your girl can figure out any gun you can. Let her pick it out. Okay, uh, with that said, one, two, three, four, and five. That is all the evil features. I've covered them all. Again, the forward pistol grip, not one of the evil features on the assault weapons ban. I believe that one's regulated by NFA 1934, saying you can't have a forward grip on a pistol. Otherwise, it becomes an AOW and has to be registered with the ATF. I know that's a lot of acronyms and whatnot, but I wanted to get this out here. This is uh, a custom-built rifle. I put this all together myself, ordered every part, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It shoots very accurately. It's great. Free float on there. This is the only rifle I've ever named. I call her Vera. And if you're a Firefly fan uh, and you're familiar with the character Jane, then you'll get the joke. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been educational. I hope you can see that these are, these are practical aspects. And that this has nothing to do with the function of the gun. Nothing on here affects the lethality of the bullet. Okay? Let's just go ahead and cover that. This is a 223 bullet. And if you're watching an anti-gun news report, They'll say it's a high-powered rifle. No, it's not. It's actually dramatically less powerful than a 308, which is a medium power cartridge. A 308 is the bare minimum for an animal like elk, okay? This is not an elk round. This is not a high-powered rifle cartridge. The only thing high-powered about it is the fact that it's not coming from a handgun, and handguns are all anemic compared to rifles. That's really about it, okay? So I hope I've given you some facts concerning the assault weapon and that it's all a bunch of hooey that anti-gun people are, are giving you. All this is is practical stuff that they have deemed evil somehow with no logic, rhyme, or reason behind it. Nothing they tell you is true, uh, sadly. It's all emotional and hysterics. But we've got the truth on our side, and we've got more people coming out trying to uh, get it out there. Assault rifle? No. No. Uh, sport utility rifle? Maybe. But uh, being that this is the number one selling firearm since the band Sunset in 2004, I think AR really should be called America's Rifle. Keep your muzzles down range, guys. We'll see you next time we got a video on here. Thanks.